OK, we're going to look at three ways to create a sunburst. First, make a triangle. As you can see, I've selected the Create Stars and Polygons tool. I'm using the control key to constrain the angle of the triangle and I want it to point in that direction and be about that big. I'm going to change the triangle by choosing the selector tool and dragging it out. Now I've clicked on that again to bring up the rotating uh, option and see this little crosshairs in the middle? I'm going to click and drag on that and take it to the end of the triangle, to the point there. Right, so that's basically the start of our sun, sunburst effect. Again, I've clicked on it twice. With the selector tool, as you can see, if you click on it once, you have the uh, change of the scale. If you click on it again, it changes so that the ends have these rotation options. So take the corner, again hold down the control key to constrain the angle, click and drag, and press the space bar to drop a copy. So I'm doing every second angle. I'm creating, as you can see, a sunburst. Like so. So that's our first sunburst. Now what I've done is just made that with copies, so I'm pretty much stuck now. If I did that again, undoing, and this time create a clone of my triangle by using the create clone. If I change this one in any way, that one changes too. So again, here I go, I've still, it's there, move this down, click, space, space, and so. Select them all by clicking and dragging around them and click group. And there we have our sunburst. Now if we wanted to change that, for instance add a gradient, we do so on the original. Oops. No, oh, no, that's okay. I'll do that again though. I'll change the gradient from the rotation one, the radial one, to the linear one. Click. Click, drag. We have yellow. We want to make this endpoint say orange and have it be overall more yellowy. And there we have a sunburst. Pretty easy. But there is an even, even easier way. Oh, I just got mail. Someone left. So the easier way is let's use this as well. Copy, paste, edit, clone, create tiled clones. Which brings up this confusing dialogue. Okay, rows and columns. We want one row. Oops, one row and say mm, seven columns and shift. We want all of these to be zero because we actually don't want these to move. We leave exp and exponent to zero. Scale, fine. Rotation is the key. We don't have any rows, but our column, we want to rotate by say 15 degrees, so long as it's selected, create, haha, -ha. do we have enough, not really, ah, we don't want fade working either, so remove, colour, also set all of these to zero, okay, and I think we need to work on our number of clones here and our uh, degrees, angle, degree, angle degree here. So let's make this <coughs> 12 and make this 18. See what happens. That's, that's reasonable. I'm not quite sure why it has 
a border though. So that's our second way of uh, creating tail clones. I wonder if I can change the position of that slightly though. That's better. And our third way of creating um, a sunburst effect is by sort of cheating and using the star tool again. This time we want to use stars and probably let's go for 17 corners. Click and drag and as you can see you kind of get this quasi starburst effect. And we're going to bring these points right in here. I'm zooming out and I'm going to create a circle. which I'm going to put behind that and flick to make a whole ellipse, send back, select both of these items and align them to center and make the red a little smaller. So it's behind here. Okay. And bring these points in even more, perhaps make them this, and now we're going to use the radial gradient from the middle, make this some kind of bluey shade in the middle, and maybe some kind of darker blue at the end. And you can see you get a different kind of starburst effect. And really, if we want to give it that funky iconic look, we will import a picture of Buddha and stick Buddha in the middle. Voila.